hello class we will continue with our um, lessons in dictionary it's a second video i will share my screen with you and let's directly start in the python screen you can see that i have already created two dictionaries d and f okay uh, i just wanted to show you that the normally the way you uh, can traverse a list and a tuple by using a for loop the same thing can be done here also uh, let me remind you once again that dictionary is not a, uh, not an ordered kind of uh, sequence it's unordered completely but still we can do it through for loop for example if we write for uh, how do we do it we write a key fine so i just wrote here that my key name is key only Fine, I wrote a variable name as key. For key in the dictionary D, right? If we do it this way, and uh, this means that as long as there is a key to read. For key in D means as long as there is a key to read from a dictionary. So <clears throat> if we print the value of this key, we can directly write this key and we can, maybe you can write this, a colon, as we get to see in a dictionary. And the value you all know by now how to access, we can write D and within square bracket, we can write this key value, the, the, the name of the key basically to get the value correspond to the key. Okay, so if we leave it up to this and see, look at this, all the keys of, <clears throat> along with the values can be accessed. <clears throat> so basically what I mean to say that membership operator you know that <clears throat> in and not in, there are two membership operators we use and both these operators can easily be used in connection with uh, a dictionary in order to traverse it or in order to get all the keys present in a dictionary. Now the same thing can happen with the values, the respective values also. Now in this connection, I would like to remind you that we have learned a function called values if you remember. Uh, those were there in my previous videos, the first the uh, two weeks back when I did that. Uh, <clears throat> so we, exactly the same way we can do, like we can write for key uh, in, we can say, or not key exactly, let me call it, uh, say, whatever, B, for B in, if we write D dot values, okay. If we write d dot values, then also it will be possible for us to, to access the values. For example, if we write here print b, now look at this what is happening. Only the values are being accessed 45, 67, 89, 97. These are the values. Fine. <clears throat> so, uh, in operator can be used in connection with the values only if we want to, if such circumstances arises. Uh, for example, if I want to look for, uh, let's consider the second dictionary, that is F, okay? And I want to see if, uh, say for example, daily is there is as one of the values present. So you can easily write that uh, daily, let me see, yeah, daily, D was capital, that's how the, the string was written, rest of them are small. Daily in, you can say, f dot values okay so this is how also we can use look at this the result is true uh, in and not in will always return you the result in true as as true and false so as daily is present as one of the values it returns the values in it returns the result in true obviously not in will do exactly the opposite thing <coughs> fine so this is one of the ways we can traverse a dictionary and we can access the values, okay? Uh, second function that we need to do today uh, is uh, that there is a function called get. Though there is not much of an utility except for uh, one particular case where it will uh, seem to you to be a little useful. Otherwise, it is not much of a use. Um, get function normally is used to get the values with respect to a key. So if I have to access a value, for example, with respect to the key three of the dictionary D, we can see that key three uh, contains the value 89. 
So we just have to write that is and anyway we can do it by writing D and within a square bracket if we th write 3 the key we will get the respective value that is 89. But in Python there is an extra function provided to you that is get. You can write get function also to do that. How do we do it? Uh, object dot function that is the common syntax that is dictionary dot function that is how we have to uh, make use of it. So d dot get if you write the exact key value that is 3 is the is a key as we can see it gives you 89. Fine. Similarly if we have to access it from C, the other dictionary f then we have to write f dot get say k3 was a key so k3 we have to write exactly the way it appears that is within a pair of double quotation mark and we get the respective value fine but in this case if we write like what we saw the error message in my previous video i was showing you the type error appears if you mention a key uh, which is not present uh, in the dictionary along with uh, pop function and del uh, del operator in both cases we saw the same thing that thing will not happen here what i mean to say is if i write d dot get and if i write a key for example here the key keys are one two three four in the dictionary d now if i write a key seven which was not present only in that case there is no output and no error message also this is the only point we need to keep it in mind it doesn't give any error message but it did not produce any output so if i write a wrong key in between the program in between a pro when the program is running uh, we cannot uh, exactly make out whether um, that searching for a particular key value is a, would be a successful one or would not be a successful one. So in this case, although it doesn't give an error message, if we want, we can generate an error, error message. Okay. So the get function provides one more parameters. That is, look at this. Uh, what you can write is you can write the key value 7. And what you can do, you can write a value, uh, an error message, sorry. Uh, as a parameter value, you can write here, say, uh, something appropriate, key not found, maybe. <coughs> if you write this, since now we can see that the key 7 is not present only in the dictionary D, so we will get the, res we will get the error message, key not found, found, which earlier we didn't get normally. By default, we will not get any message. So it's a very simple function, get, I told you. Um, there is uh, one more function, uh, we call it items. Items basically gives you uh, all the key and the value. Okay, this key value pair, uh, that will be given as a sequence. In fact, we'll get to see a list will be given to us, wherein in every list, the elements will be the key value, key value kind of tuple, smaller tuples. Every element will be a tuple. Like um, if we do d dot items, okay, what happens? Look at this, it gives you that same kind of format, dict items. Like uh, in my previous video, you must have, uh, you must be remembering that if we want to print only that, I'm just showing you once again, d dot values if you do. Then also dict dot dict that underscore values comes and within a uh, list look at this uh, all the values present in the dictionary appears similarly if we write d dot keys then then also we can get all the keys but in dict items what happening here look at this when we do, wrote items use made use of items function what happened it gave us look at this the tuple tuple is every element of the uh, list and wherein every tuple has basically the key and the value pair of, uh, that value pair is there as, as part of every tuple. So if it is a list, for example, um, <coughs> if you take, uh, say G is, the, is going to hold the value, if we write uh, D, D dot items, fine, then what will happen? G will be having all these things so if I print G, then what happens? We'll get to see the list uh, very, very clearly. It's not a list, it's a sequence basically. We can convert it into list if we want to. Like for example, we can write G equal to list and function applied to uh, D dot items. 
Okay, exactly. We have done the same thing for the uh, key dot uh, dictionary dot keys and dictionary dot values also. Okay, now if we print G, you will get to see the <coughs> list very, very clearly, wherein every element is a tuple and wherein every tuple we get to see the key value pair. Now, obviously here, the first element of the G is 267. So further, if you want to access a particular key and the value further, you can always do it like this, like G of one and zero. So that means correspond to <coughs> the, basically what happens correspond to the, uh, the first element of the list. You want to take out the, the zeroth because that is a nested kind of thing. So zeroth element is look at this two. So it gave you the value. Okay. So in every key, in every element, we know the key is there in the zeroth place. So by using a uh, you know, double index system, we can easily access the keys. In various programs, it might be useful. Later on, we'll discuss it. <coughs> so that is the utility of items function. Another small function I will tell you, in fact, that is the last one that is called update. What is update? Update function is used basically to update a, a, a dictionary with the help of another dictionary, which is like S1, say imagine is a, is a dictionary. Here I'm taking a very simple way the keys are say one, two, three, four. Say here we had key one, key two, key three, and key four. Only four keys we had, fine. Now another dictionary we have here, key one is say of triple digit, two, two, three, and purposely I'm making it so that uh, we can figure out the difference. Uh, two equal to say 267. Imagine in this dictionary, there is no key three. Key three was not there only. We had key four instead. And also we had a key five. Okay, say <coughs> this is the thing we have. Now, update function basically, as I was telling you, will help us update a particular dictionary. Say I want to update dictionary S1. Okay, so I will write S1 dot update. And how do I want to update? I want to update it with the help of S2. So I will write S2. Now I purposely, uh, you know, chose the key value combination in S1 and S2 this way, so that you can figure out it's a little complicated. I tried to make it. <clears throat> Look at this here, what will happen if I, what do you mean to say by the update here? First of all, what will happen according to S2's, S2 is going to update S1. So according to S2 now, the value of S1 will change. <clears throat> so wherever the value of S1 was uh, like for the key one, the latest value is two, 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 three. So that 23 will be changed into two, two, three. But look at this very carefully here in, in S2, there was no key called three. So that means three will three of S1, the key number three of S1 should remain unaffected because there is nobody to change him. But we can also see that then extra key has come here in S2. That is key number five. So key number five was not there only in S1, but now S1 will be having a key called S, uh, that key number five. So if we do like this, and if we print S1, we'll be able to see what is happening. Look at this, <clears throat> number one, number two, number three remained as it is. Number four also got changed and number five got added, right? So we just have to remember these few functions. So that's the end of uh, the dictionary. Uh, I don't think anything else is left out. If anything is left out, I will just check it out. Let us, in the next video, we'll just discuss one or two simple programs.